you already know many Italian words, many are food related, including pizza, carbonara, risotto, spaghetti, lasagne and gnocchi. What you may not know is that Italian words like these are gendered. This means they can be either feminine or masculine. This is called grammatical gender. In this video, we'll look at what grammatical gender is and how to find out the gender of a word in Italian and how to use Italian definite and indefinite articles. Pronti? Ready? Cominciamo! Let's get started! Ciao ciao, mi chiamo Michelle, sono la Intrepid Guide, la vostra guida per imparare l'italiano, per viaggiare o per entrare in contatto con le vostre origini italiane come me, attraverso il mio metodo originale 8020. Hi, my name is Michelle, I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to learning Italian for travel or to connect with your Italian heritage like I did, all by using my unique 8020 method. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Now, if you're learning Italian, download my free guide, Seven Mistakes in Italian and How to Avoid Them. Just click on the link in the description below and I'll send you my free guide. Why is grammatical gender important? If you're new to language learning, you may have never heard of grammatical gender. Gender in the grammatical sense means that a word can be classified as masculine, feminine or neuter. In Italian, all nouns, articles, pronouns and adjectives have a gender. To help you brush up on these basic grammatical terms, here is a quick recap. Nouns. Generally speaking, this is anything you can place a or the in front of. This could be a place, idea, animals, things, event or person. For example, a bowl of pasta, the Colosseum, a piazza. Definite and indefinite articles. Now this is a word placed before a noun to indicate whether we are talking about a specific thing or in general. In English we use the word the when speaking about a specific thing. This is called a definite article. When we speak about something in general we use a or a. For example, a house. This is called the indefinite article. Pronouns. A pronoun is a word that replaces a noun in a sentence. In English, we use I, you, he, she, it, we, you plural, and they. For example, in the sentence Mario ate a pizza, we can replace Mario's name and say he ate a pizza. Adjectives. Anything that you can place is in front of is an adjective. An adjective describes something. For example, is small, is round, is smart, is hot. I capito. Do you understand? Gender in Italian. In Italian, all nouns have a specific gender, masculine, feminine, and number, singular, plural. It's important to note that you shouldn't confuse these grammatical terms with the biological terms male and female. Once upon a time, English also used grammatical gender. In fact, there is still some leftovers. Have you ever noticed that we spell blonde with an E when referring to a female and blonde without an E when referring to a male? What about how we instinctively refer to cars and ships as her or she? This isn't logical, this is custom. Remember this when learning Italian words. Italian articles. Just like in English, there are two main types of articles in Italian definite and indefinite. The definite article is used to introduce nouns that refer to a specific item. In English, we use the article the. The indefinite article is used when we know what type of person or thing the noun refers to, but not which individual. They are equivalent to articles a and an in English. The indefinite article has no plural. How to identify the gender of a noun. The reason why a particular noun is masculine or feminine is not always obvious. Determining a noun's gender, however, is quite easy in Italian. The clue is in the endings. Most Italian nouns end in a vowel. Nouns that end in a consonant are of foreign origin. Whether a noun is masculine or feminine, the endings are almost always consistent. There are, of course, some exceptions. Now let's take a look at some of the words or nouns we saw earlier and discover their gender. Pizza is feminine. You can tell from the ending A. The same applies to carbonara. Risotto is masculine. When you see the ending O, this usually lets us know the word is masculine. 
Spaghetti is also masculine, but the letter I defines the masculine word in the plural form. Here's a tip. The word spaghetto doesn't exist, but I challenge you to have a dish with just one spaghetto. Not enough to be sure. Lasagne is feminine plural. We know this because it ends with an E. Now these endings of Italian words are quite important to remember. So let's summarize these rules again. We have O is the ending of masculine words. For example, biscotto, which is a cookie or biscuit. A is the ending of feminine words in the singular. For example, mozzarella. I is the ending of masculine plural words. For example, tortellini. E is the ending of feminine plural words, for example, tagliatelle. There are, of course, some exceptions. We wouldn't be Italians without exceptions, right? But the rules that you see here can apply to most cases. This singular definite article. Now, gender also affects the kind of article we need to put in front of a noun. Italian has its fair share of articles, but of course, articles have to match the gender and number of the word they relate to. Sounds difficult. No, it's just a matter of practice. The more you read or listen to Italian speaking, the more familiar these articles will become. Let's look at the articles one by one. First of all, the definite articles. What in English we identify as the word the. The risotto. Il risotto. Il is the masculine article with words starting with most consonants. The pizza. La pizza. La is the feminine article with words starting with any consonant. Then there are a few more definite articles to consider. We use lo with masculine words starting with gn, s plus consonant, pn, ps, x, y and z. For example, we say lo sport, lo yogurt and lo zio, the uncle. We use L apostrophe with masculine and feminine words, starting with a vowel, A, E, I, O, U. For example, l'autostrada, l'amico, the male friend. The plural definite article. Now let's take a look at some nouns in the plural form, such as spaghetti, tagliatelle, lasagne, but also bambini, children, nonni, grandparents, and fratelli, brothers or siblings. La familia has to be reckoned with, especially if you have an Italian background. So let's take a look at plural definite articles. Le is used in front of feminine words in the plural, starting with consonants or vowels. For example, le lasagne, le nonne, grandmothers. I is used in front of masculine words, starting with most consonants. For example, i nonni, the grandparents, i fratelli, brothers or siblings. Li is used in front of masculine words starting with vowels, gn, s plus a consonant, pn, ps, x, y, and z. For example, gli spaghetti or gli zi for uncles. Here is a summary of definite articles. We've covered a lot of ground so far, so let's take a look at the five rules for using definite articles. Rule number one, lo, and the plural gli, is used before masculine nouns beginning with gn, S plus a consonant, PN, PS, X, Y, and Z. For example, lo specchio, the mirror, li specchi, the mirrors. Rule number two, il and the plural I is used before masculine nouns beginning with all other consonants. For example, il libro, the book, i libri, the books. Rule number three, la and the plural le is used before feminine nouns beginning with a consonant. For example, la finestra, the window, or le finestre, the windows. Rule number four, l with an apostrophe or the plural gli is used before masculine nouns beginning with a vowel. For example, l'amico, the male friend, or gli amici, the male friends or friends. Rule number five, L with an apostrophe and the plural le is used before feminine nouns beginning with a vowel. For example, l'autostrada, the highway, or le autostrade, the highways. Or put another way, here is a table of all possible definite articles. So masculine plus a consonant, we have il for singular and i for plural. And example words include il treno for train, il tavolo for table, il panino for sandwich if it's masculine and begins with a vowel we have l apostrophe for singular and gli for plural examples include 
l'estratto. For the extract. L'ambasciatore. For the ambassador. Now, if it's masculine and begins with GN, S plus a consonant, PN, PS, X, Y, or Z, we have LO for the singular and LI for the plural. And some example words include LO GNOMO for the gnome, LO STUDENTE, the student, LO PNEUMATICO, the tire, LO PSICOLOGO, the psychologist, LO YOGURT, for the yogurt, LO ZAINO, for the backpack, LO ZIO, for the uncle. If the word is feminine and starts with a consonant, we have LA in the singular and LE in the plural. For example, we have LA MAMMA, the mum, LA PIZZA, for the pizza. Now, if it's feminine and begins with a vowel, we have L apostrophe for the singular and LE for the plural. And some examples include L'area, l'internet, l'unione, l'idea. The indefinite article. We know all the ways to say the in Italian, so how do we translate a and an in Italian? Well, we have four options. Un, uno, una, and un with an apostrophe. Does a certain card game spring to mind, like uno? Now, this can be a great memory hook to help you remember that uno means one, or a or an. Look at these words. Can you guess which articles match each word? Let's try. Panino, meaning sandwich. This is masculine singular. So what is it? Un panino, esatto. Mamma, this means mum. This is feminine singular. What is it? Una mamma, bravo. So when do you use uno? Can you guess? Think back to the definite masculine article where we used lo. This is the indefinite form uno. Let the final o in both of these articles help you to remember this rule. Again, uno is used in front of masculine words starting with the rebellious consonants gn, s plus a consonant, pn, ps, x, y, and z. Ecco qui, here we go. Uno zio. An uncle. Uno studente. A male student. Uno psicologo. A male psychologist. Last but not least, we have un with an apostrophe. Now, this indefinite article is used in front of feminine words starting with a vowel. The apostrophe is there to avoid doubling up on vowels, so it's easier to pronounce and just rolls off the tongue. For example, una amica, a female friend. Un acqua minerale, a mineral water. Here is a summary of indefinite articles. Now, here are four rules to apply when using indefinite articles. Rule number one, uno is used in front of masculine words beginning with Z or S plus a consonant, PS or GN. For example, uno zaino, a backpack. Rule number two, un is used in front of all other masculine words beginning with any other consonant or vowel. For example, un aeroplano, an aeroplane. Rule number three, Una is used in front of feminine words beginning with a consonant. For example, una stazione, a station. Rule number four, un with an apostrophe is used in front of feminine words beginning with a vowel. For example, un automobile, a car. As you encounter new words, you will be able to recognize and remember these rules. Allora, eccoci qua. So there we have it, your complete guide to grammatical gender and articles in Italian. Do you want to learn Italian? Got a trip coming up or want to communicate with your Italian partner or relatives in Italian? Learn Italian with my unique 8020 method. Registrations are now open to join Intrepid Italian, my series of online self-paced video courses for beginners, advanced beginners and intermediate students who want to take the next step with an effective and strategic approach to learning Italian. As your guide, I walk you through each lesson step by step by using my 80-20 method. My approach is different from traditional methods because I teach you the most important 20% of the language right from the beginning so you can start to speak straight away. Intrepid Italian includes everything you need to go from an absolute beginner to a confident intermediate speaker. Available in three levels, each course is perfect if you value learning at your own pace. Materials include video lessons, audio exercises, downloadable worksheets, bonus guides, a private support community, and lifetime access, all designed to streamline your learning while having fun. 
It even comes with my famous celebrate with a spritz guarantee. After 30 days of using Intrepid Italian, if you don't want to celebrate your newfound Italian skills with an Aperol spritz, you don't have to pay a penny. Cheers to that! For more details, click on the link in the description below this video. Ci vediamo lì, I'll see you there. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy language learning. Un abbraccio. Ciao.